currently between my third and fourth year of medical school. Technically, I've started my fourth year classes, but I haven't taken my step two yet. And with everything going on, um, there's a lot of uncertainty about how my fourth year is going to pan out. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you five things I learned since starting med school. Now what I mean by paperwork isn't the traditional sense, like writing things and having to fill things out. What I mean by paperwork is the amount of time that you spend typing information into the electronic health record. I don't know if a lot of people know this, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I don't think it's something that's widely publicized. Potentially because it's also a new trend with the installation of electronic health records, a larger part of a physician's job is to input what they're doing in day to day into the electronic health system so that everything is up to date and everyone in the healthcare team has that information available to them. In general, the workflow kind of looks like this. The day starts off with the attending and the residents leading the healthcare team to formulate the plan of action. And then with the attending giving the green light, the resident then goes and executes those orders into the computer. Um, and sometimes they also go do them physically. On the other end, the nurses receive that on the computer. They're usually by the bedside of the patient and so once they receive those orders, then they're the ones who carry out the orders. So that's kind of the general workflow. I think it is different from what people think that doctors are the ones taking care of the patient and things like that. Everyone on the healthcare team is taking care of the patient, but they're doing it in different ways. So doctors are the ones who are kind of analyzing the situation from a little bit of a distance, gathering all the information and then coming up with a diagnosis and then set of plans and then the nurses administers the medication, um, checks the vital signs, the ones who are kind of closest and has the most contact with the patient. So yeah, that's the first thing that I learned since starting med school. So number two is collaboration. Some people still think that being a doctor is someone who just works and interacts with their patient. That's not really the reality today because there are so many members in the healthcare team. This includes nurses, physician assistants, social workers, physical therapists, definitely radiographic technicians are a huge part of the team and also transport team. So all of these people are essential to the proper functioning of patient care in the hospital. Doctors who work out of clinic are no different because they do have to work with nurses, medical assistants, and everyone who's involved in the outpatient setting as well. I think that's definitely another thing that I learned. Everyone has a role in patient care. It's definitely not a one-man show because healthcare is becoming more and more complex. It is definitely um, a very team-oriented career. <laughs> And another thing I wanted to bring up is that as a med student, you should never feel too good to do something. Meaning you should always be ready to get down and dirty. That's another thing that I do like about this field is that even though there are set roles, but when it comes down to it, if there is an emergency, everyone's role is fluid. Especially as a med student, your role is definitely fluid and you can basically try to help out in any way possible. So evidence-based medicine is definitely replacing what we call expert opinion. No longer are the days when doctors were the sole source of information and authority. These days with increasing amounts of studies and data coming forward, it becomes increasingly unscientific for doctors to give advice without evidence supporting that. And alongside at the same time, there is a democratization of information. So because of these sorts of shifting changes, the doctor's role is kind of changing from one that used to be paternalistic to one that is kind of becoming more of a facilitator. It used to be that doctors were the authority figure. The patient went to the doctor and you listened to what the doctor told you to do 
and then you followed without really questioning too much. But these days, because we have more information on our hands and there's so much more information and research being produced on science and medical health side, the doctor is becoming someone who is able to synthesize and make sense of all the information that's available and then present that to the patient in a fathomable way and help guide the patient to make a decision for him or herself based on priorities and values and the patient's own way of life. For different people who want to achieve similar goals, the answer might be very different because two different individuals have different values in life. So the way I kind of see it is if the patient is an athlete, and preventing heart disease or diabetes is the goal, the doctor is more like a coach rather than a parent telling what the patient should or shouldn't do. The doctor has a long-term relationship with the patient. She's there to guide the patient to ultimately reach his or her goal. Evidence-based medicine is shifting the relationship between the doctor and the patient. Let's move on to number four. All right, this one is my favorite. You don't have to be good at science or even benchwork research to be able to pursue a field in medicine. Of course, there are still standards because getting into medical school has so many requirements and you have to show it in terms of your grades. But I want people to know that medicine isn't just for people who are good at science. Medicine these days is becoming so, so diverse. There are new specialties being created as we speak. The AAMC has listed specialties that are new areas of medicine that are being crafted. Something that I've never heard of, and this sounds amazingly cool, is called lifestyle medicine. This is something that is also up and coming. These kinds of physicians teach about healthy ways to live. And I think this is such a huge space where we definitely need to fill because a lot of times medicine is prescriptive and we do prescribe medications to solve a lot of illnesses, but not all illnesses can be solved with just a pill. Being a doctor who can show people exercises, diet, sleeping habits that can help increase your health without taking a medication is also something that is super valuable. You can see there are so many opportunities in medicine that don't necessitate you to be super amazing at science. You can be good at technology, you can be good at math, you can be good at physics, you can be even good at social media and communicating, and there are opportunities for you in medicine. So, moving on to number five. Now, Number five is compensation. I think there definitely is a sort of impression that doctors make a lot of money and are well off. So let's look at some data. Uh, according to Medscape, in 2019, primary care physicians earned on an average of $237,000 annually, while specialists earned an average of $341,000 annually. Comparing that to the median household income of the same year, which was $63,030, physician incomes are significantly higher than the average worker salary. However, I also think it's important to take into account the years of training that leads up to the day that the physician actually makes that quoted and published amount of salary. This training includes a total of four years of university, four years of medical school, three to seven years of residency, and one to three years of fellowship if you decide to take additional training. So if you add up the number of years invested into becoming a doctor in the US, it totals up to a minimum of 11 years to a maximum of 17 years. Now, that's a lot of years where you're not making the quoted sum of $237,000 annually. So from a financial perspective, I think it is important to take into account opportunity cost 
and the time value of money of potential investments in those years that medicine really takes. Now, because choosing medicine is such a big commitment and it is all too easy to do a quick Google search and to see what the physician's salary is at face value and make your decision based on that, I think it is all the more important to emphasize that there are other variables that go into becoming a board certified physician, not to mention the many hours of studying that you'll have to be doing and all the tests that you'll be taking as well. In the end, choosing any path in life will have its ups and downs. Being at the start of my medical journey, I truly feel grateful that I can be part of such a caring, hardworking group of people in the healthcare space. So far, my experience through third year rotation has taught me so much and shown me that there really isn't a routine or ordinary day in medicine. With that said, those are the five things that I've learned since starting med school and I hope sharing this with you has helped you in some way. If you like this information and you like me to go into other topics, please list and comment down below what you like to hear. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one.